there's one other thing I wanted to explore as well, uh, which is tech. So normally we think of like tech screens, those types of things as a a major distraction. You know, it's mm -hmm. probably like the reason why we some some parents are are quite, mm, they're not happy with the amount of screen time that maybe their kids are spending these days. Uh, but is there tech? Is there like technology that that we use as tools that are helpful to help us build this kind of connection, reframe our success and lead us towards a path where they're st going to start thriving? They're going to start having like this roadmap, this plan where they're going to start improving. Yeah. So I think that um, with technology, even from a young age, we have to introduce that technology is not just for games or YouTube videos. Um, it's a perfect way to be productive. Um, having real conversations about productivity and technology at a young age is really um, helpful. So even for me with my three-year-old, I've recently discovered this um, application called Boom Cards. So he, yeah, he watches his YouTube videos. He loves a blippy, but he also has time where he has to use the same iPad to do, you know, matching activities and, and work, you know, same thing he'd be doing in class, but like tracing or, or identifying shapes and things like that. And, you know, gamification. So he's learning now at three years old that, wow, the iPad or the, t the TV can also be used for doing something or achieving a goal. Right. So we're having a con uh, not a conversation, but we're actively modeling um, how to use technology just beyond YouTube. Right. Which most toddlers, that's what's happening. And then now as they get older, how do we start using tech in class without it being all about games? So I think the younger that we we start integrating technology into the classroom, um, the easier it will be as the kids grow to, to self-regulate and manage how they use technology. So I found that, I find in Jamaica, for example, in our schools, they have, they don't use an iPad um, ongoing during class or one-to-one -one tech. They literally have it scheduled into the timetable that this is tech time. And this is, the, this is when they probably learn how to do typing. Um, and that's really the, the, the usage is very limited until maybe high school. And I found that for, young, for the schools that use it on a more, um, for everything, you know, let's record a project or let's create the, the, the music that's going to go towards the video that you're playing in class or using it for productive assignments or even recording their homework or putting it in a calendar. We, I've found that that's become, that those children are easier as they go get older to regulate, okay, it's game time versus play time on, on, on their um, technology. So I think starting very early in how they use technology and how they interact with it is very important. I think like for millennials or generation, because it came at a time right we had already learned the hard, you know, life things. We're now just going to start using tech for game. We, we learned it in a time when we could manage it all. But our kids are learning it from like, the, they're pushed out of the womb, you know? So we have to be very conscious about like teaching them very early because then you're going to be doing a lot of, what I'm finding is a lot of my like late middle school students who weren't using tech all along, they're just so focused on, I want to play Minecraft and Roblox right now when it's time for school time. They don't even know how to really manage or regulate. They just want to do play games instead of using applications that can be so impactful for learning. So we really have to manage that. That's, that's what I would say is a priority um, for parents and teachers is really in introducing them to tech earlier, but also the productivity tools earlier. So I still have high schoolers in grade 12 that have never used Google Calendar and Google Drive. So I have been literally trying to get them to start managing their Google tasks, all their assignments. So they plan, you know, on Monday at two o'clock, I'm going to buy the supplies to do my project. On Tuesday at four o'clock, I'm actually going to write down what I need to do. So I'm helping them to plan step by step but using technology so that they, they develop a healthy relationship with it. I love that because what this means is like, you're right. It, like, life is not necessarily as exciting as a video game. And that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why it's so important to have that unique 
perspective of like, yeah, you're going to have to learn stuff out there. And I, I do love uh, boom, boomlearning.com. Mm -hmm. I put a link inside the, the comments um, because it's a way of just putting a little bit more fun into the, the questions that mm -hmm. are being asked. And to me, like a lot of the, the fun, um, like tech tools are, are ones that involve creativity. Right. Um, so maybe it's like Procreate or maybe it's Scratch or maybe mm -hmm. it's, it's some, some type of creation tool. Like I feel like yeah. the most creative thing out there is uh, the camera. Yeah. Because right? the kids are always wanting to go like, look at what I created. They all want Isn't a YouTube awesome? channel. <laughs> Yeah, like, and it doesn't have to, like, people think, like, oh, if they're on YouTube, like, it's got to be, like, public, but you can make all the yeah. videos unlisted. So if you only want to share it with, um, say, friends and family, um, or maybe even just your your family and the grandparents, that's fine, mm -hmm. you know, like, you can create that video. And, like, the kids will also, like, when they're recording their video of um, just some Lego that they put together, they're like, okay, welcome to my channel. If you like it, please subscribe, mm -hmm. like, click the, the bell icon, you know, yeah. and, you know more. and it's like, it's a fun way for them to, to express themselves. And I think that really that's the, the objective here is just giving them some chance to talk about what they are yeah. really passionate about. And that's so hard to share these days. And I, I love like what you mentioned about, um, you know, there, there's so many different things that they're going to have to learn typing. There are games for typing. That's great. Like, like, like you mm -hmm. build a skill. Like, yeah. That. There are questions like, uh, did you just watch that video or did you actually learn anything from the right, video? Right, exactly. If they're gonna if they're gonna spend time watching something, then have a conversation about it at dinner time. You need to know what they're watching, you know. Um, also, just I know with increased um, online schooling during the pandemic, there is a concern that while wow, my child is just getting too much screen time, and how am I gonna manage this? I think that it's okay to have real conversations about okay you can have depending on the age of the child let's say an hour to just interact with your friends on this game or do that like you still have to put structures in place because we also have to think about you know their eyes <laughs> um and and really you know i've also i found on the flip side that my students have a really difficult time communicating face to face but when they're on among us they're they're talking so we need to be very conscious about how our children can lose that sense of um, communication and face-to-face -face interaction when it comes to having very difficult conversations, conflict resolution. So I think we have to be very conscious about how we manage that um, as well. And I, I would also say to parents, don't beat them, don't beat yourself up about it too much because life is hard. We're all going through a difficult time transitioning work and play and sometimes you just want that child on the ipad so you don't even have to think about them and that's that's okay too like just be gentle with yourself you know but also just be conscious of it um about the the flip side of it so are you going to manage on the weekend that you know let's do activities together and make sure that we're communicating like how are you going to manage it and that's just something you have to make a decision about in your family life so all of this is really great and i do think that you know, especially when it comes to, to parents that uh, this don't be too hard on yourself is very mm -hmm. important. Like we are all in the midst of like an unprecedented <laughs> pandemic yeah. right now. If you haven't got everything figured out, that's okay because, mm -hmm. you know, nobody would have been able to tell you, hey, this is going to happen. Right. Um, you know, especially with our, our day and age, like mm -hmm. th things are so unique in, in our time. And so it's, it's important to, to have that level of uh, forgiveness. But that said, doesn't mean necessarily that we just give up altogether and we, we don't try to improve. Like we are constantly doing small tweaks, small things that make things easier for us, right. things that Im improve uh, little by little. And I think that that's, that's where the learning comes in. That's where it becomes more fun. And I, I like what you said earlier about um, sometimes when you watch those videos, like you, you actually find activities that you do yeah. that, like with, with the kids in order to, to get them engaged. Like, how do I know what you, you watched? Um, and so like sometimes we at, in, in my family, we have activities that we um, like. So, for example, we'll watch a movie on a Friday evening uh, yeah, together right. and then we'll have some discussions around it. Maybe we'll watch the usually there's some kind of breakdown, like somebody mm -hmm. breaks down the, the elements of the movie for us. Um, and then we have some discussion around the, the movies. I'm just curious, like uh, when it comes to like the videos that you watch, how do you know what kind of questions to ask and, and what kinds of things do you do to get them engaged? With their interests um so i think that 
so I think that once a parent Googles open-ended conversations or open-ended questions, that's a great start. Um, really not asking your kids yes and no questions about what you think they're learning or understanding. So if you find that when you say, you know, um, how was school? And they say, you know, I had a, I, it was a horrible day. Well, what could have happened to make it, um, what could have you done to improve the day? That instead of really asking them what went bad, how could you have improved on it? Or what would have went better? So that they, if you will eventually get the information out of them without them focusing on the negatives. So I think um, it's really about just taking time to practice, you know, open-ended questions that are not yes and no, like is, is you know, like I was reading with my son earlier, actually before this, and it, he's three, as I said, and I was asking him to point out the different animals. So to understand if he's really understanding what the animals do and their differences, I was like, oh, can you can you show me which animal is the cow? Oh, what sound does it make? Oh, what do humans get from a cow? So that he could, he had to think about it. There were some things he couldn't answer, but it caused him to really be like, well, why mommy? Or, you know, so, um, trying to have open-ended conversations about anything is a huge um, step in the right direction. So if it is that you're watching a movie, as you say, you know, how did it make you feel when Tom Hanks did that? <laughs> you know, think about their emotions versus, you know, that could be a real conversation about emotions and how they're handling something, a, a similar situation at home. You know what I mean? So always think about the big picture, is it emotions that you're focusing on and then how can we bring it back home um i think that family game night family movie night um, family dinner those are really important things that are coming from way back when that are so important to keep back because if you're living a busy a leading a busy week work week and you don't get to connect with your children even if it's once every other week try to find that connection point or i you know i had a client this week she has five kids so she was like telling me, you know, and they're ranging from 18 to 18 months old. And I'm like, wow, you're a superstar mom. So what she's had to do is um, set like an hour, maybe on a Sunday, this child gets this time. And she's had to, you know, just even say that it's, it's a time when I'm just going to come in her room and it's me and you. We're going to play a game. It's all about you and what you're going through. Try to be intentional with that, even if it's once every other week, whatever you can do. Um, connection points are going to be, are just super critical right now. Hmm. So it, it like, it's almost like if we don't um, schedule our, our one-on-one -on -one time, it, it's basically not going to happen. It sounds like, especially when you've got five kids, you know, yeah. how are you going to manage that many people? Uh, I mean, that many for me, men? if it's not in my calendar, it doesn't happen, period. So <laughs> anything, it's like I had, last week I missed a meeting and I'm like, but you didn't send me a meeting request, so therefore it couldn't happen. So. It, it, it couldn't have <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Like, I'm the same way too. Like, it, without a calendar, I don't know how I would survive. Because exactly. we, like, there's so many things and there's so many demands for your time. Uh, as a parent, I think that, you know, more and more we need to like, it's, it's funny because that said, it, like, I've heard this a lot where, you know, the family stuff often isn't calendar, yeah. hasn't, but all your work stuff always is. And so what happens, it, what tends to happen is that because the family stuff is not on the calendar, then we, we don't schedule it. We don't make it happen. And then people are like, I don't see you ever. And I, I don't like yep. speak to you. Like, what is going on? And it feels like, can we at least put our families and our, our children on the calendar yeah. um, as much as a priority as we do, say, for our work related meetings? Yes, mm -hmm. our work is important. Um, but I guess they're like, there's no reason why they we have to separate the two. It's like we can have a family calendar. And we can put like family related activities that we want to do with them and we can schedule yeah. them regularly recurring yeah. mm -hmm. uh, too. It's just like, Oh, I regularly join some kind of like meeting. Great. Yeah. Like I, I can exactly. regularly have a meeting with my kids. Like, yeah, even hour. if it's like every third weekend of the month, we go to a museum, like whatever it is, be intentional about it and set it so that that's that. Like when I think back to my childhood, I remember very key things that I did with my family. And I want my son to remember specific things as well. So I have to be intentional about that because life happens. Life comes at us fast. I mean, we're done out the first quarter of the year already, you know? <laughs> so it's just super important, as you said, 
be intentional about scheduling that time. I mean, even my husband and I, we have to put in date nights it, or it's not, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> even if the time comes, we're like, oh, can't be bothered. But if it's in our calendar, then we'll be like, okay, let's do it. You know? So. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, some, for some, some of us, if that's the difference, just being able to schedule it and, and suddenly they're connecting, that makes it all worthwhile, right? Like it, and teach your kids to schedule too. Even if, you know, you share the calendar with them. On, and they can see it on their phones like oh it's time for game night so even if they're not doing the scheduling um at school yet you know in terms if they're in like elementary school you can still have it at home where you're teaching them to use tech um for productivity and it comes up on their ipads that oh i have my meeting with mommy now date night with daddy whatever it is you know that's amazing so uh, one of the things, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for all of these incredible insights. I've learned so much today. Um, I think your approach for it, like, it's just, it just, it just jives so well with, you know, some of the, the things that, that we talk about on this channel, what's important for relating. And I think you, you describe it in a very practical way. And since you're doing this, um, you know, professionally coaching as well, I mean, this is, we really appreciate those, those insights. 